Hi, um, I'm Stefan Berlet-Batero, sitting in the Living Your Dreams um, exhibition, uh, together with uh, Boris Ho, artist, uh, was a piece in this show, and Rob Kessler, uh, University Chair of University of the Arts London. Um, we're going to have a discussion within the space and the context of this uh, exhibition uh, about, well, site-specific art because this exhibition is a response to the to the crypt of St. Pancras Church, um, installation art, and and the fact that the idea in the sense that uh, installations are inevitably a response to a context and 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 it's a kind of play or game that installation is forever recontextualized, decontextualized uh, and transformed for the process of um, of uh, exhibiting. So uh, Rob, you wanted to say? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, it, uh, it's curious for me because I, I, my dreams are external, not internal. So I, I very rarely dream, or at least I very rarely remember any dreams I've had. Uh, but I do, uh, my waking dream is really kind of moving around externally and then entering into places that have, uh, have a memory or a history or a smell or a yeah. touch. Um, and that's uh, that's sort of the challenge: how to use those spaces. Mm. That's what I've done a lot in a way. Yeah. In my career, I've seldom showing white cube spaces. <laughs> it can be anywhere from a uh, from a high street showroom to a kind of Georgian house yeah. to a, a cave to a garden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think. This this idea of yeah of the ex externality or ex or interiority of, of, of dreaming is um, is an interesting question and I, I would say that in the in the case of this of this project it it, it didn't really I mean it was a very a natural response or a, a natural feeling of, of just going down the stairs and going into the depth uh, of the space uh, was what, what kind of prompted this idea of uh, an exhibition about the, the underworld metaphor, the, the, the underworld of the artist's mind and this kind of um, subterranean territory and, and the idea of the depths of, of, of creativity, in fact. Um, I, w I wouldn't say that all artists responded to the exclusively subterranean aspect. Some, I think some, some installation in the show tried to, to reach outside in a sense, but it's... Um, it's also a question of how do you interiorize the outside as well. How, how do you relate intimately to the outside world? And in this sense, the dream, dreams are a kind of mediation of this dialogue between inside and outside, uh, which, which uh, yeah, Bachelard develops in the, in the poetic subspace, which is a kind of uh, cornerstone uh, reference to this, to this whole exhibition. Um, or is your, your, I'm thinking of your piece, The Space Divider, because it's, it's Precisely about the partition, partition of the space. Yeah, I mean, my work is more about installation, so mm. it's, it's well, it is very playful on challenging in terms of creativ creativity. You always have to adapt to a context, a purpose. For instance, when you asked me if you want to be part of the show, I was never thinking about dreams, especially. So I said, okay. Dreams. You want to talk about both sides of dreams, a bit darker, a bit fantasies. So uh, I said, let's let's react and all pieces do, do it again. And the, uh, the artworks are never finished. With, when you do installation, you always have to fit. So it's very challenging because you have nothing gray in the stone. Yeah. So it's it's uh, everything is clearly open, and you have to react uh, to the space here. For instance, uh, in in. Um, in the preparation of, of this piece, when I did the perfume with the perfumer, it was completely the opposite in that, uh, in terms of smell. They reacted completely different, differently here. It was the opposite of what, is, what it was planned. So it's always, okay, you have to react to, to deal with, and it's, it's um, you are never bored of what you are doing. It's always new, and uh, that's the good thing about installation, I think, and reacting to this amazing space. The white cube is more just a white paper that you can always do the same. Um, yeah, you're almost surprised you got an improvisation, which 
was very, very interesting. Yeah, I think in that, in that regards, your, uh, your work particularly embodies this, this dialectics of the stone and the smell, in a sense. So the, the, the smell is more like a, a movement, yeah, an idea yeah, that can be reinterpreted or recreated, uh, given, I mean, depending on the, on the context. And the stone is more like a, perhaps the static backdrop uh, that, that the smell needs to, f to flow and to, to convey your, your ideas. And, and it's actually quite interesting because uh, it's the, when you enter this show, when you, you descend the stairs, uh, well, yeah, it's, 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 it's there. The, the, yeah. top, the, the, the psychedelic mushroom smell is, is definitely there. Um, uh, but in a sense, I mean, to react to what you were saying earlier, it can also bring brings in the in the depth of the space the the reference to an outside because yeah the mushroom the forest the cave I mean it's a it's 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 quite interesting in that sense to to have this movement I think and the circulation from your work across across the show throughout the show it's yeah it's naturally hermetic yeah. in uh, two years ago I visited a, a, a monastic cave mm -hmm. in Portugal and it was created by a Capuchin monks. And it is completely lined with cork because of the natural cork trees. Mm. Uh, and it was, it was a very different experience to any other kind of subterranean yeah. space I've been in because it was dry and it was warm and, and the sound was completely muffled. So first impressions on entering the space are really important. And I suppose as the artist, one has to really be able to respond intelligently, but also uh, Im imaginatively to every kind of detail that's there. You need to kind of soak in what's there. Um, I mean, I thought this was interesting in that the smell has sort of disappeared, but there's a kind of, uh, you're almost dividing the space that your work inhabits in two. There's an invisible kind of uh, partition yeah. you know, yeah. between the two families. I was changed and great. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you're right, it's, um, you, you, you talk about focusing on pain in detail. Sometimes when you are working site specific, it's clearly you have to do nearly nothing because you just have to find tiny, few, tiny things that uh, react to, to the space, react to the con social context too. I mean, it could be a co creating purpose, it could be uh, the social context. So it's always being kind of humble about your, your practice. Okay, just deal with something else. That's kind of communication to fit with the other. It's, it's, it's very generous to do this kind of installation way of doing art because you're, you're not yeah. the only one. Yeah, it's, it's quite it's, it's a challenge. I mean, I've seen about four different shows here mm. in the past few years, and so each one is very different. Uh, so everyone responds in a different way. It's a bit like a turbine hall, and how you respond yeah. to something exactly. so yeah. uh, the space has huge such a huge presence. and yeah. such a presence, and uh, it, that's a that's a that's a real challenge. Yeah. If you can yeah. crack that one, you know, you, you have to be quite brave. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I was about to say that. I mean, curatorially, curatorially speaking. Yeah. It's um, creating a response to a space like this is is, is very interesting because it, it both uh, implies different sense of freedom in the space and the different sense of constraints. So freedom in the sense that it allow. I mean, I, I, I think it's possible to show pieces here that would have maybe would not fit in the context of a white cube, as you were saying earlier. So it's very playful and engaging in that sense. Yeah. I was delighted to, to show some pieces that, that found a resonance or an existence here that it might have been different in a, in a, in a white cube or gallery or, or more conventional museum context. And at the same time, it's exactly what you say, it's trying to find uh, a dialogue with the space rather than purely occupying it with art, yeah. uh, which is more the, the, the purpose of the cube, of the, of the gallery. So the, the most, I think the, the most, uh, impressive experience I've had had here is is coming down, coming in when the when the space was empty. But, but it's a bit paradoxical in a way because you know, we're coming down here. Mm. We are up in a city, but completely out of the city. The sound is completely different. But it's kind of this tension between 
being connected and disconnected. It's the same for the artworks here. They are disconnected to, uh, to what they are, and also very connected to the, to the space. It's, it's in between. You've got, you got this tension of in-betweens everywhere. That creates a more density uh, in, in the approach. Of course, the other thing also is that this was a um, slightly anonymous space, and Fred, you had been before. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you visit, I've been fortunate to visit uh, Necromandia, which is the uh, site in Greece and mm. down to the underworld. So um, you, you enter it for the first time, but you enter it uh, with the knowledge of what you're entering. So you can, your response is quite different. Obviously. You're, for a start, you're with other people. Uh, and so it's a kind of pilgrimage to the site of uh, the mythological site of the country. Yeah, absolutely. For me, it, it's um, when I yeah when I first got to know the, the spaces resonated also with the, the catacombs in Paris, which is as the similar idea of um, of a life that is is both there and absent, that is is uh, uh, secluded from the from the above, and it's kind of. Um, History that that is not aware of itself because it's not historicized. So, in in a sense, a, a, a kind of history that is similar to the to the construction of the of the unconscious or Freud's notion of the of unconscious as a as a knowledge that is, that doesn't know itself, in a sense. And, and this place reminded me of that, and that that was kind of the starting point of, of the show. You you raise a very interesting point, which is predisposition. I mean. In a, in a way, every work is, is, art, is a, a site specific because when you are in a white cube right now, because of all the history of the white cube of this way of showing, you got also a predisposition of how to see the art, or to get some distance from the art, from the viewer, and having a, a white space. It's, it's a different hallowed but space. It create, yeah, but it, it's always creating predisposition, and, and it's always also playing with this predisposition. It's, it's very funny here, because when some people from the church are coming, just not because they're not used to art, but it's, it's also their place, close to their place. So it's new public with different pre predispositions different mindsets, too. Yeah. So it's uh, it's what being out of the white cube all over all over us to to touch this, uh, somebody else and to react to this. I mean, for me, that's always been an important part of what I do, and that is engaging with the audiences mm. of those spaces, mm. whether it be the people who normally use it or the, yeah. or the people who are uh, visiting it by chance, yeah. uh, and that's. Um, that throws up opportunities which you don't get in conventional gallery spaces in quite the same yeah. way. Mm -hmm. um, because it, uh, I mean, the show I currently have on, which is in a, Jac a Jacobean house, and people visit it quite regularly. Mm -hmm. They go walking their dogs there, and so they never know quite what they're going to, to see. Um, so it's really interesting to get their response. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, as an artist, I, I like to engage with different kinds of audiences mm -hmm. um, because you hear very different things from people who maybe don't look at contemporary art all the time. Um, and that's really rewarding. To see it through their eyes uh, and to hear some of their kind of questions. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, yeah, both for artists and curator equally, I think, uh, engaging with, with audience that's, that do not look at what we look, the way we look at it. And uh, that's, that's the magic that is constantly renewed in an exhibition in a, in a place, in a neutral place. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to, yeah, to not um, to go out of the white cube and to confront ourselves with these different audiences, different publics, and, and layered, layered interpretations. Because in the end, it also comes comes down to that way of perceiving, perceiving art and, and reinventing it by taking it outside of, of, of its conventional space. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the white cube is something that you have to avoid. It's it's no, it's, no, it's, no, it's just no, another yeah, yeah. another it's thing to play with. Absolutely, it's 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 yeah. it's, it's raised the thing that um, the artwork is not it very deal with the question of autonomy of the artworks. Is it autonomy or not? Could be could be self sufficient to uh, yeah, is it, so is it dependent on or is yeah. it kind of you know, yeah. specific to that? And I think it's interesting that you know, the piece in front of us, um, you can see in the catalogue, was shown differently in the space. So it wasn't yeah, which is these concrete cores were not shown on the kind of white sheet. So 
that changes it completely. Right? Absolutely. I mean, the, the sheet gives a whole different uh, level of meaning. And, and the idea kind of came out of discussion I have with, with the artist Benjamin Renault of, of as you say, of playing with the space and playing with the work and sort of recreating it and try to give the, to, to echo the initial function of, of this, this script, which is a, a vault uh, for burials, and play with the, um, the, the mortuary sheet. Um, it's a shroud, yeah. it's a shroud, yeah. it's quite, absolutely. quite, I like the word sh shroud, yeah. because it's, yeah. uh, it has different inflections in yeah. the music, it's kind of shrouded in uh, a slight mystery, it's kind yeah. of shrouded in, in memory. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. nice, it's, yeah, it's a poetic word actually. Yeah. Well, well suited. I mean, I think it's, it's some works, um, the other piece with this sheet in testing, I mean, that, it, it, it's, uh, that lends itself to that site, just the very that yeah. space. Very yeah, well, well, surprisingly, it was created before, but it's, it's yeah. perfectly yeah, contextualized it's, here. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it, it is a challenge to come and make a piece specific. Uh, Usually it takes time. It takes time, and I, I uh, if I am doing something which is more of an installation, I always leave some gaps that I have to respond to uh, when I'm installing. Mm. So there is kind of surprise for me as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean that that yeah that deals with the question of also the, the spontaneity of, of uh, installation. Yeah. So what what room do you leave for unexpected for just being, I mean, that, instead yeah. of being in the space. And, yeah. I mean, there's one piece in, in this show, this Jacobean house, where I have a lot of silk. So that kind of images of microscopic plant material printed onto silk. And this one room, it was a difficult room to put anything into. And, uh, but I wanted to put something there. So I had this silk hanging out, I thought I'll have it as if it's coming down this chimney, it's a beautiful fireplace. So I installed it and I stood back. And actually, the draft of the chimney and the lamps, it just sucked it straight up. So then I hooked the silk up to one side. And now, depending on how windy it is, when someone opens the front door of the house, it creates a draft through, and it sucks the silk part of the way up. So it's kind of, it has a press, which I could never, I would never have planned that really. So I think it's, for me, uh, sometimes seeing how artists respond to an opportunity is really, really yeah. But it's also, I mean, we are all young artists showing in this show, and uh, mostly. And um, to be site specific, you have also to to get experience yeah, and to yeah. be self self confident enough and to be able to react with your skills enough strongly and enough speedily with, with, with to react fastly to to this context yeah. because you don't have a lot of time to to deal with. So it's also you have to be mature in a way. That's why yeah. it's a, a long process to learn to be able to to, to read. The space yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and to, to draw with it, yeah. so it's, it's clearly yeah. um, there is something that you have to experience for us. Mm. Sure. Have you shown before any kind of spaces like this? Um, not specifically, but I did some public spaces, public uh, public uh, artworks in different social contexts. So I always react to, to this kind of things or some government commission with uh, in collaboration with another artist where I learn a lot. So it's it's always it's a bit design in a way. That's that's also I mean it's a part of the designing the thing. It's it's part of this kind of process. But it's um it's yeah, I did it somewhere and it's always interesting. But actually it's it's for instance it's a bit paradox of here. Because my the artwork that I show was clearly done when I had a studio, so it was clearly a, a studio-based artwork that I recreate with this manner. But it's kind of um, in between two. It's not so site-specific, but it's, it's play with the space. So it, it's. Uh, but I think it's also, yeah, having generating all this experience of of making work uh, in unconventional space or public space, and also. Taking this whole experience back back in the studio and in in, in more usual way of showing, and it, it's equally uh, interesting for creators to 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 have to, yeah to generate this 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 knowledge and then take it back in, into the gallery or into the museum mm -hmm. and, and find new way of exhibiting uh, within yeah within 
full diversity of, of the yeah, region. I, mean, I think it's interesting, as, you know, uh, I think um, Richard Deacon's talking about yeah. next week, yeah. you know, you know, his generation, my generation, you know, their practice really was almost the reverse. So yeah. they were bringing back the artifacts in places like mm. this to, yeah. to make improvisational sculptures uh, every day in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Bill Woodrow and Tony Cragg. Yeah. And it was very much a kind of discovery of the discarded and uh, reworking those for simple fighting objects. Mm. Yeah. And actually, it was that point that Gaston Bachelot's book became much more prominent. Yeah, yeah very influential. Yeah. 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 So it was interesting that it's a kind of reversal. Yeah, I mean, we always do, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's completely. Yeah, yeah no, and it's also no right a con so. constant rereading and, and yeah. interpretation of the past as well. Because if you, even if you look at, at Bachelard's book, it's just a, a manner of rereading uh, Jung's uh, famous house dream, where he explains that he kind of discovers the, the idea of uh, the collective uh, archetypes from the collective unconscious by um, delving into a, a cellar. And so this rereading, which stems actually from the Orphic descent, the motif of the Orphic descent, and the Nekia as the descent into the underworld, which is which has been there and missed from from the birth of written language and, and mankind. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's an interesting, it's constant rereading. But this kind of rereading, it could be also tricky in a way because uh, the past could is always coming to the present because you have to react to what you have already developed. So, I mean, it's kind of. Um, if you do, if you create a lot, a lot of project, mm. but um, so that means every time you reinstall the project, it's always the past is going on. The past is never ended, and sometimes it's also fresh to have a kind of piece that it's beyond you, and you just hang it yeah. and you just show it. Now you got the, the um, so it's kind of reacting. The past, the past is never past, but the past is always uh, present. The present is never present because it's always. Uh, you got always the past is coming on, mm -hmm. so it, it's kind of very. It could be self-destructive in a way because uh, it's when you produce to so much uh, works that you just have this yeah. huge story that's just crush you. So yeah. it's kind of weird to do this <laughs> sometimes. I don't know if, if you yeah, in terms of production. I mean, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think I was interested in this piece because I often will rework pieces in mm. setting, yeah. and some people don't do that. I mean, that's kind of thing that's natural. The, um, uh, I suppose I have a more flexible approach, and you're responding to a particular time and place, which you can read differently. And, um, mm. and actually, it's, it's all an experiment in a sense of, yeah. to help you decide on what you're going to do the next time around. It's that experience um, that you get through doing it. I, mean, I, mean, I haven't thought before in the conversation really. I suppose I have, I have entered a lot of different underground sp yes. <laughs> spaces, uh, which are uh, yeah, um, different tomb spaces, and they all have a very, very different quality. I mean, I remember uh, visiting the tomb of Philip of Macedonia in Greece before it was open to the public, I mean, just after they opened it, and uh, just just after they discovered it, and. Uh, and that was really very special. It was uh, there was no one else there, mm. and it's a bit like visiting, uh, being let into a museum when there's no one there. Yeah, yeah it's a very intimate so experience. It's, it's yeah. your, it is an intimacy. Yeah. It's and it's quite hard. I mean, you asked me did I enjoy the show? Actually, I don't enjoy the private views. I don't enjoy looking at work at the private views because you don't see much, and you yeah. uh, and usually I find it usually a negative experience because mm. whereas seeing it empty is uh, or less full. <laughs> it's different. You have time to reflect and yeah. for the work to uh, spin. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a good way to conclude this discussion, yeah. to say, well, come see the come see the show, Live in Your Dreams in the Crypt, uh, in a very intimate uh, setting and feeling, uh, and, and go see Rod show at the Jacobian House as well. Um, yeah, so. and 40, 44 in uh, Enfield. In <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for us. Yeah. Pleasure. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>